Hello friends and welcome to the start of my Christmas in July themed reading vlog. It has been a while since I've vlogged. Ever since starting work at the Humane Society, I haven't really been able to vlog all that much because I haven't had the time to edit vlogs, so I've had to kind of put those on the back burner and I really missed it. I felt like I was catching up with you on a weekly basis and I just haven't been able to do that recently. But I had the idea for this Christmas in July vlog because if you remember, for Bookmas last year, I bought a ton of Christmas slash holiday themed romance books and I did a series where I was reading the first chapter of each book to see like which ones I was the most interested in so that I could read them. But I did didn't actually end up reading any of them. I was so ensconced in a TBR that I had already set and just like trying to catch up on things that I never read any of them. So I still have all of those books just kind of hanging out on my TBR shelf. And so I was like, there was probably no way that I'm going to be able to read all of these books in just like December, especially with all of the other things that I'm trying to do by the end of the year. So why not try to knock some of them out sooner than that? And I know that a lot of places and other things do a Christmas in July type of situation. And so I was like, yes, I'm going to do that. I do have the very first book that I've started already. And that is a very merry bromance by Lissa K. Adams. I've only read the first book in this series. I haven't read books two, three, four, and this is book five, but I already have it. And so I wanted to go ahead and read it. And that's especially true because for my TBR, I actually drew the challenge of reading the next book in the Bromance Book Club series. And so technically that should be book number two, but since I already have this, and since I was going to be doing this vlog, I figured it would be perfect to go ahead and just pick this one up. I'm only 25 pages in, so I don't have a gist of what it's going to be about. Let me really quickly read the back to give you a more thorough idea of what this is about. Country music golden boy Colton Wheeler felt the most perfect harmony when he was with Gretchen Winthrop but for her it was a love him and leave him situation. A year later Colton is struggling to push his music forward in a new direction. If it wasn't about to be the most magical time of the year and if not for the support of the bromance book club he'd be wallowing in self-pity. It's hard for immigration attorney Gretchen not to feel a little scrooge-ish about the excess of Christmas when her clients are scrambling to afford their rent. So when her estranged wealthy family reaches out with an offer that will allow her to better serve the community she's unable to say no. She just needs to convince Colton to be the new face of her family's whiskey brand. Colton agrees to consider Gretchen's offer in exchange for three dates before Christmas. With the help of the Bromance Book Club, Colton throws himself into the task of proving to her there's a spark between them, but Gretchen and Colton will both need to overcome the ghosts of Christmas past to build a future together. This whole series revolves around a Bromance Book Club, which is literally a bunch of guys who form a book club where they read nothing but romance. And the whole entire objective of this book club is to help them be better lovers and partners to their girlfriends so they can understand better what women want and kind of to view love and the world and relationships through a less toxic lens than they've been kind of taught their whole entire lives, right? So that is the entire of the bromance book club. So like I said, I read book number one. This is book number five. You really don't need to read them in any kind of order. They can kind of stand alone, but obviously you're going to miss certain things. Like if you skip around, like already there have been relationships that have formed that weren't formed in the first book. So by the time I go back and read those other books, I'm already going to have known what's happened, but that's okay. I'm not really mad about it. I do know that I've started this one, like I said, 25 pages in and I'm really enjoying it so far. So we're going to continue with this and we're going to hopefully have a very merry Christmas in July. Anyway, y'all, that is it for this very first update. I'm actually currently in the middle of hosting reading sprints. We're in the middle of our very last sprint. So I've got to get back to it. And then I've got to get ready for bed because tomorrow I'm working at the Humane Society, but I just wanted to come on here and open this vlog. I'm excited to read some Christmas romance, especially since it's like a hundred degrees outside and I'm like manifesting fall and winter and Christmas and the holiday season. Anyway, y'all, I gotta go, but I will check in with you when I have more to say about a very merry bromance. <laughs> Hello everybody. It is currently Monday morning. I am trying to get up the motivation to go into work. I am tired y'all. Even though I only work at the Humane Society one day a week, it is a lot of physical work and just not having a second day to relax and decompress and unwind. It is a lot and I have to kind of switch gears. Working at the Humane Society is such a different environment than what I do professionally and it's just a lot on my brain and my body and so I'm just like not looking forward to going in there and having to do my normal work stuff and talk to people. I don't want to talk to people. 
But anyway, I am now way further into A Very Merry Bromance. In fact, I should be finishing it today. I am 65% of the way through, but I think I only have like maybe an hour and a half of listening time left. So I will definitely be getting that done today. But I just kind of wanted to give you more of an update on like what it is actually about and what is happening. Our main characters, Gretchen and Colton, met at a wedding and they had a really passionate night together. And Colton was thinking it was going to be the start of something more, but Gretchen really wanted nothing to do with it. Gretchen is part of a very well-known, very wealthy family in Nashville, Tennessee. They have a really popular whiskey company and she really didn't like what her family stood for. She was always considered the outcast and the black sheep of the family and now she's a lawyer working in immigration. So she kind of lives in this like little one bedroom apartment. She does a lot of the work that she does pro bono and so she's really not living on her family's wealth and reputation and fame and all of that good stuff. And of course Colton is a country music star but he is having some career trouble. He took about a two-year break from performing or writing and everything and now the record label is set to drop him if he doesn't come up with some good music and so they're gonna actually pair him with with some songwriters which he's not really thrilled about so he's going through some stuff too and now Gretchen's family wants Colton to be the face of their whiskey and so after a year Gretchen has to get in contact with Colton and make the proposal but Colton will not even consider it unless Gretchen goes on some dates with them so naturally you're following them as they're going on a couple of dates and things are just kind of progressing from there and I mean overall I find this to be very cute like I said it's very easy to read and fly through but I'm not really getting the oomph factor for this I don't really think I'm going to be getting the substance that I look for I do however like the the dynamic between Gretchen and Colton. I like how Colton can see Gretchen for who she is and what her passions are and he can really appreciate that and I do like the fact that Gretchen has separated herself from her toxic family because even though they are definitely prestigious, they are well known, they have a really successful business, a lot of who they are and what they do are very toxic in nature and so she's very much separated herself from that so I like seeing that dynamic. So there are definitely some complications, there are some conflicts and everything like that but it's just, it's not really giving me the oomph that I'm looking for. So while I'm enjoying myself during this reading experience and I do enjoy Lissa K. Adams writing overall. I just don't necessarily think that this is going to be like a memorable romance read for me. Right now I'm sitting at about a three, possibly a 3.5 stars at most, but we're going to see. I still have 35% of the book left, but like I said, that's only like an hour and a half of listening time left. So I will tear through this tonight and I will give you a final update once I have one. Anyway, y'all, it is time for me to go ahead and head into work and I will give you an update once I've finished A Very Merry Bromance. Hey y'all, so we are here. It's a little bit later on Monday night. We are here in this spectacular lighting with me looking like a hot mess as per usual because I just got my July fairy loot so I thought I would unbox it here but also I just finished a very merry bromance by Lissa K. Adams and I wanted to go ahead and give you an update. So I think I may need to eat my words a little bit from the clip that I gave just earlier this morning because this book ended up being a lot harder hitting than I thought. It wasn't necessarily like an emotional gut punch. It's not something that's going to make me cry or anything but there were a lot of underlying issues in this story particularly with regard to Gretchen and her family. You find out a lot about what Gretchen experienced growing up and how awful her older brother was to her and how kind of neglectful and aloof her parents were. And I don't think I mentioned this in a previous clip, but one thing about Gretchen is that she absolutely hates Christmas. And Colton was out on a mission to like show her what magic Christmas could bring. And you just kind of find out why exactly she hates Christmas because she never really had a real one, you know, and she never really had a family that would want to celebrate Christmas. You know, as I mentioned before, she was always kind of the outcast, the black sheep. She never really felt like she belonged and her brothers were just awful to her and she just never really had a good family life so why would she like Christmas? A lot of the story was focused on her and her issues with her family and I really enjoyed that aspect of it because it brought a level of depth and dimension to the story and it added the oomph that I was looking for. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this a solid four stars. I really enjoyed the characters of Colton and Gretchen and I really loved how Colton saw and treated Gretchen and I just liked Gretchen as a character overall. She was just such a strong woman who was willing to fight for justice and fight for what was right. Overall this ended up being a lot stronger than I was thinking it was going to and so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four stars and it is time to move on to the next read of this vlog which I haven't actually chosen yet but as soon as I've chosen it I will come on and give you an update about it of course but for now let's go ahead and unbox the July adult book only fairy loot. So here's the spoiler card it looks like the theme is eternal power I have no idea what this book is I don't get spoilers or anything like that so I have no idea. As usual all I see first are brilliant sprayed edges so here's the book and it is a more Longings by Chloe Gong. Okay, so I'm going to admit that I'm not really all that interested in this story. I talked about it recently in my July new releases and I did see that it was a book of the month selection for July and I completely passed right over it. So I may end up going ahead and passing this along. I'm not sure. Let me read to you what it's about. It says, every year thousands flock to San Air, the dangerously dense capital twin cities of the kingdom of Talon, where the palace hosts a set of deadly games. Those confident in their ability to jump between bodies can enter a fight to the death with a chance to win unimaginable riches.
branches. Princess Kala Tualemi has been in hiding for five years ever since she murdered her parents to free the people of Tallinn from her tyrannical family. Okay, that sounds promising though. Only one person stands in her way of finishing the job, her reclusive uncle King Kasa. However, she knows he always freaks the victor of the games. If she wins, she will finally get the chance to kill him. Enter Anton Makusa, whose childhood love has lain in a coma since they were both ousted from the palace. He's deeper in debt trying to keep her alive, which means his last chance at saving her is entering the games and winning. When Anton proposes an unexpected alliance with Kala, they quickly find their partnership spiraling into something all-consuming. But before the games close, Kala must decide what she's playing for, her lover or her kingdom. For no matter what, only one of them can walk out alive. Okay, so now that I'm rereading that synopsis, it does have my interest a little bit peaked. But let me go ahead and show you this edition in full. But those are the sprayed edges. It kind of looks exactly like the cover there. Ooh, the naked hardcover is different. It's like this orangey red. Look at that, y'all. Holy cow. That is really, really beautiful. And then some of the end pages. Ooh, she looks fierce. Ooh, she's giving me Mia Corberry vibes, and I'm actually all about this. So I think maybe I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot, especially since it's beautiful, and it sounds like we have a badass female character who wants to assassinate her entire family, and I can vibe with it. So I am actually really happy to have this one out. All right, y'all. So that is it for this update. I need to go select the next book for this vlog, and I'll come back on when I actually have more to say about it. So talk to you later. Hi friends, so it is currently Tuesday morning. I am at work, obviously, and I just wanted to come on here and give you an update because last night when I was giving you my update, I hadn't yet selected my next read for this vlog, and I have since selected The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer. So this follows our main character, Rachel Rubenstein Goldblatt, and she is from a prominent Jewish family in New York. So naturally her Jewish heritage and all of that stuff is very, very important to her. However, Rachel is actually harboring a pretty big secret. She loves Christmas. She is obsessed with Christmas and not only that, but she has written like 20 very successful Christmas romances and some of them have actually been adapted into made for TV movies. So Christmas is a huge part of her life, but she can't share that with basically anybody because she thinks her family would be deeply ashamed. And she also thinks that it would negatively affect her father who is a very well-known rabbi in their community. So she is keeping this a secret, but then one day she is meeting with her agent and editor and all of that stuff. And they actually tell her that they don't want her to write Christmas romances currently. They actually want her to write a Hanukkah romance. And this completely throws her for a loop because to her Hanukkah is not magical like Christmas. She has no idea how she's actually going to go about writing this. She's so uninspired. She does not want to do this. Then one day she gets inspiration when she's reading a newspaper article and she sees information on this matzo ball which is basically kind of like an event, a gathering, a dance if you will. And she is determined to go ahead and get tickets even if they are sold out. But there is one additional catch and the person that is throwing the matzo ball is Jacob Greenberg. And Jacob Greenberg is somebody that she knew when she was 12 years old. They went to Jewish summer camp together and they had kind of this little romance until Jacob pulled a prank on her and deeply humiliated her and it's something that she's never really been able to let go of and now she sees that he is the one that she is going to have to contact in order to get tickets but not only that her family is hosting him for Shabbat and she has been invited to come because her parents want to set her up with Jacob which of course she doesn't want but she's gonna go and she's gonna meet with him because she has to get these tickets so I've actually just gotten to the point where she and Jacob are reconnecting for the first time they haven't really actually had a conversation so nothing has been revealed but apparently it turns out that Jacob seems to feel like he was the one that that was wronged back in summer camp like he feels that Rachel broke his heart and not the other way around so there's definitely going to be some miscommunication I feel that is happening here and I'm interested to see their dynamic and how they resolve it I have never really read a Jewish romance or a Jewish holiday story or anything like that so there's a lot of information here that I was not familiar with I'm completely ignorant about the Jewish faith so I find a lot of that really fascinating and I kind of want to see how this develops between Rachel and Jacob now I'm really not convinced that something that happened to both of them when they were just 12 years old has impacted them so profoundly but I'm gonna see how it all kind of comes together because I mean really I get having things in childhood impact you in such a deeply profound way but both of them separately are kind of like claiming how much they really loved and cared for the other person and the other person broke their heart and I really just don't see having such a substantial and meaningful relationship at just 12 years old Now that could be just from my perspective because I certainly wasn't in relationships at 12 years old and maybe I'm the wrong one here we're gonna see I know that I'm already really curious to see their first interactions and see what is going to happen so I'm here for it and I really enjoy Rachel's obsession with 
Christmas even though she is Jewish. I personally am a big Christmas person. I love the holiday season and I can definitely see the magic that Rachel sees in Christmas. And so I really want to see how this relationship with Jacob progresses and her holiday romance. Also, of course, I want to see her secret revealed. I want to see her family find out that she is a Christmas romance writer because I think that's really, really interesting. So still very, very early days in this story, but I'm enjoying it so far and I will certainly be giving you an update once I have more to say. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to come on here and give a quick update about the matzo ball. I'm trying to do at least one update in between starting the book and finishing the book. So it's not just, hey, I started this book. Hey, I finished this book. So right off the bat, there are definitely several things that I really enjoy about the story. I think it is cute, fun, and sweet, and I'm having a really good time. I'm also really enjoying the representation of chronic illness. Our main character, Rachel, actually has chronic fatigue syndrome, which is not something that you really see represented in basically anything. Movies, television, books, you really don't see it. But this book is actually making me understand that illness a lot better and how debilitating it can be. And it's even more difficult because it's kind of an invisible illness. Like outwardly, you don't see anything wrong with this person. I just can imagine how frustrating that is. And it's something that she doesn't even really want to talk about. She doesn't want to share because of the reactions of people. Like when she tells people that she's got chronic fatigue syndrome and like the looks that she gets and stuff. I will say that I really feel like this book is hindering somewhat on like miscommunications and misunderstandings in order to fuel the plot. So I believe I mentioned in my past clip that Rachel and Jacob originally met at Jewish summer camp when they were 12 and they had this really cute little love story going on. Before that, before they started falling for each other, they were pranksters. Like they started to get to know each other through pranks that they would pull on each other. And those pranks really helped them open up to each other and really helped them through tough times in their lives, especially for Jacob, whose mom was ill and whose dad had just kind of left them. And he really valued Rachel and he feels like Rachel saved his life. So that was a very formative time in his life. And then I believe I also mentioned that both of them have very different opinions on what happened at Camp Ahava. Jacob feels like Rachel broke his heart and abandoned him on the dance floor. And Rachel feels like Jacob pulled a prank and made their first kiss into like the laughing stock of the camp, right? And so they both have these really different interpretations of what happened, but neither one of them have yet shared those misinterpretations. So they're both going around feeling like they are the wronged party. And Rachel is in general, a very serious person. And so Jacob feels like in order to get her to open up and be honest once again, because she's also a very private person, he starts to do some kind of practical jokes on her and she's not in on the joke. She doesn't understand. She feels like he's trying to humiliate her and she's kind of just looking at him like he's the same boy that he was at Camp Ahava. So it's not working out. So he's doing these really ridiculous things to try to get Rachel's attention, try to get her to loosen up and be honest with him, but yet he's not communicating with her properly. And then what's even more infuriating is when he actually leaves a wide open door to talk about Camp Ahava, Rachel doesn't walk in. Like he's going to her apartment to apologize for something and he gets frustrated and he says that she broke his heart at Camp Ahava and naturally she's really thrown back by that because she feels like she's the one that had her heart broken but she doesn't say anything about it she doesn't correct him she doesn't try to get to the bottom of what he's saying you've showed me who you really are at Camp Ahava you know you're just that same boy from Camp Ahava but she doesn't elaborate on any of that this is definitely one of those situations where if they would literally just talk to each other things would be okay and of course Rachel is holding her own secrets you know nobody knows that she's a Christmas romance writer a lot of people don't know that she's sick so there's things that she's being really dishonest about so there's secrets there's miscommunication there's misperceptions and I just really don't like that in a book I still have I would say probably about just slightly less than two hours of listening time left and I'm hopefully going to bust that out today and finish it so that I could start the third and possibly final book for this vlog so we're gonna see how it ends we're gonna see if it all comes together right now I think I'm leaning at like a three 3.5 stars of course the ending has the ability to completely turn it around for me I'm not mad about reading it for sure I'm glad that I'm reading it um, but I do wish that there was less miscommunication and stuff like that I feel like it would be way better anyway y'all it is time for me to go ahead and go into work so I will check in with you when I've actually finished this book
actually currently getting ready to head out to work, but I had a couple of minutes and I literally just finished the matzo ball by Jean Melter, so I thought I would come on here and wrap it up for you. And unfortunately, I'm sad to say this didn't do a whole lot for me. As I believe I mentioned in a previous clip, there were some aspects of this that I really enjoyed, like the chronic illness representation. I loved the fact that our main character was a closeted Christmas story writer, and I loved the magic that she saw in Christmas. And I actually liked some of the banter between Jacob and Rachel overall, but that was about it. I really didn't like all of the misconceptions, misunderstandings. I also didn't like the dishonesty. Rachel, throughout almost the entirety of the book, was lying to somebody about something. And one thing about the story that I wasn't expecting was insta-love. I don't know if I mentioned this previously, but basically Jacob has been living in Paris for the past 20 some odd years. Since his mother got ill and his father basically abandoned them, they moved to Paris because that's where his mother was from. He hasn't been back to New York since, and the only reason why he is back in New York is to throw his matzo ball. So he is expected to only be in New York for eight or nine days, and then he's headed back to France. And so within just a week and a half, it goes from zero to 100. Jacob and Rachel haven't seen each other since they were 12 years old. And again, a lot of misunderstandings, misperceptions. And then they go from that to, I love you, I want to spend the rest of my life with you within eight days. And I just could not get behind that, especially because I didn't really feel any chemistry between these two characters. I don't think Jean Melter did a great job at all of convincing me as a reader that these two belong together, that they had undeniable chemistry or anything like that. And I certainly wasn't going to believe that based on a relationship that they had at 12 years old. That to me was still the most implausible thing about this story. I think it might have worked a lot better had they been high school students. Like if they had been 15 or 16 years old, I could have possibly gotten behind that. Like I couldn't get behind something so traumatic happening to these two at 12 years old that they never forgot each other. So much so that now almost two decades later, they're able to just instantly fall in love with each other. And again, there was really no chemistry. There was no heat between them. I really love slow burn romances. I need that sexual tension in order to get me invested into the relationship. And there was absolutely none of that in here. I feel like this would have been a little bit more believable had they decided to start a relationship at the end of the eight days, not when they were full on confessing their love for each other by the end of that eight days, if that makes sense. So I think I'm only going to give this one a three stars. I had a good time overall while I was reading it. It was a pretty fun time for the most part, but it just didn't do it for me. I'm probably going to forget everything about it in just a couple of weeks. And I think I'm going to ultimately end up selling it on Pango at some point. So I am glad that I read it because it was on my physical TBR. It is something that I had bought to read and now I have read it and I can let it go. That is my update for this next book for this vlog. I'm going to take a slight break and read another book that was on my TBR for July because we are now getting to the very end of July and I need to finish at least one more book from my TBR. So I'm going to go ahead and read that and then pick what's probably going to be the final book for this vlog. So as soon as I know what that is, I will come on here and give you an update. Hi friends. So it is Saturday afternoon and I just got done doing a lot of filming and now I'm about to sit down and do my weekly reading sprints for everybody on my channel. But I did want to come on here and give you an update because I have officially selected what's probably going to be the last book for this vlog and it's called The Last Gift by Emily Stone. Now this is definitely Christmas related in that Christmas played a big part in the main character's life but I don't actually think the entirety of this book is set at Christmas but we're gonna count it because on Goodreads it's labeled as like a Christmas romance so we're gonna go with it. But so far it primarily deals with themes of grief. So in the story we're following our main character Cassie and she and her brother Tom they lost their parents when they were both very very young and she and Tom always had an extremely close relationship. They ended up being raised by their maternal aunt and every Christmas Tom would create an elaborate scavenger hunt for Cassie to complete and that continued well into adulthood. And then one day Tom is going on some type of trip like an expedition, a hiking trip, a mountain climbing trip, I'm not entirely sure but he has a fatal accident and he is killed. And I'm honestly actually just getting to the point where Tom has passed away. It's been a couple months since he's passed away and of course Emily hasn't really done much with herself or done much with her life. As they are going through Tom's things, they come across clue one in the scavenger hunt for that year because Tom actually passed away shortly before Christmas and he wasn't supposed to like arrive back until around Christmas Eve and so he had planned out the scavenger hunt in advance. Of course he was going to give her the first clue on Christmas but now he's gone and they came across the first clue and at this point she hasn't opened it so I have no idea what it's going to say but apparently it's supposed to be like the most epic one yet and I feel like this is going to be about Emily going on the scavenger hunt but I also feel like it's kind of going to be about her trying to move forward with the loss of her brother because as I mentioned she no longer has any parents and now Tom is gone and so she's lost a lot of people and she's really on her own and she's struggling and I have a feeling that this is just going to be like a very poignant and heartwarming story about her kind of finding her way and also finding love. The primary focus of like the first couple of chapters of the story 
it was actually Cassie's relationship with Sam who was Tom's best friend and it sounds like she always had a really big crush on Sam and when she was 20 years old it seemed like they were gonna kind of like act on their attraction to each other and Sam really blew that and the main start of the story starts when Cassie is 25 that's when Tom passes away so it's been about five years since all of the stuff with Sam went down and she really doesn't see or speak to him she accepts him as Tom's best friend but that's about it she really wants nothing to do with him other than that and in recent years he's kind of made some poor decisions and he's about to get married but it seems like he might be kind of a drunk like relying on alcohol so Cassie is really not pleased with him at all they really don't have much of a relationship but I think that this is probably going to be like their second chance I'm not really sure but that's kind of like the gist that I'm getting and I'm gonna be honest with you and say that I'm really really loving this now am I getting Christmas vibes from this no absolutely not because I really feel like it's more about grief and love than it is about Christmas but like I said we are gonna roll with it because it is labeled as a Christmas romance on Goodreads this was like about a 10 plus hour long audiobook and I'm already two and a half to three hours into it so I will definitely finish this tomorrow if not today so I'm going to fly through this book and then we can conclude this vlog but anyway y'all there are some things that I have to get done before sprints these are really gonna be like productivity sprints for me because I can never just sit down and read I have to be relaxed to read and when my house is in the state that it's in I cannot relax so these are gonna be productivity sprints I'm going to be editing doing laundry cleaning all of that good stuff and there are a couple of things I want to tidy up before we actually get to the sprints so I'm gonna do that and I will possibly check in a little bit later if not I will check in when I have more reading thoughts on one last gift It has actually been several days since my last update. I actually finished one last gift on Sunday. So I started it on Saturday and finished it on Sunday because I was able to blow through it really quickly. But I am going to be honest and I just have not had the bandwidth to sit down and do a final update and close out this vlog. I don't feel like I have too terribly much more to say about the story outside of what I already said in the first clip. I will say that I noticed that throughout that entire first clip when I was talking about the book that I kept calling the main character Emily, which is the author's name not the main character. I believe the main character's name was Cassie. But I ended up really enjoying this story. It was probably the strongest of the three. And also, even though there is a romance in this story, it is not the focus of the story. This really is about Cassie and her grief over the loss of her brother, Tom. And I feel like the relationship is secondary. So the fact that this is labeled a Christmas romance is accurate, but it's not. I feel like you're definitely getting a lot more when you're going into the story than just a Christmas romance. So overall, I very much enjoyed the story. Y'all know that I do enjoy a story that focuses on grief because I feel it's a very understandable and bonding experience that we all go through. I really enjoyed Cassie's relationship with her brother Tom. I thought it was beautiful and sweet and I could just feel the horrific loss after he passed away. That's especially true because they were orphaned so young. So now she really doesn't have anybody. And for the longest portion of this book, she was estranged from Sam. And she kind of actually blamed him for Tom's death because he was supposed to be going on the same trip as Tom on their like hiking expedition. And she feels like if Sam had been there, he wouldn't have died. So there are many years when she doesn't have positive feelings towards Sam and she wants nothing to do with him. But of course it all gets resolved in the end and they really end up making their way back to each other. So it was definitely sweet and heartwarming. There were a lot of touching moments I thought this was pretty well written and like I said it was easy to fly through and I would definitely be willing to read more from Emily Stone in the future. I believe she has at least one other book out on her backlist and anything that she comes out in the future I would be willing to read because I thought that this was such a strong story. So even though it definitely didn't give me like the Hallmark Christmas romance vibes to be honest none of these books did. It was definitely the strongest of the three and I enjoyed it a lot. So that's it y'all. I think that this is going to be the end of this vlog. I ended up reading three books which I'm pretty proud of especially since I started so late in July opening this vlog but I had a really good time doing it even though I feel like the books that I chose weren't as Christmassy as I wanted them to be. I think the only one that really truly gave me the Christmas romancy vibes was A Very Merry Bromance. They all definitely had Christmas themes in them throughout the story so that was good. Anyway I hope that you enjoyed this vlog but for now I'm gonna go ahead and get back to work so I will see you in the next video and the next vlog. Bye guys. Bye.